Good morning, AO Tribe. Today is Wednesday. I'm here for another uh, mentor session here. Um, my name is Shelly Merrill. I live in Ventura, California, and I have some questions here that I'm going to give my perspective on the answers. Um, I hope you all are doing well. I'm happy you're here. Okay, my first question is from Liv Gruber. What steps do we need to take to manufacture a product? The background is we want to manufacture a specific lamp. I found a model that I like on Alibaba, but I would like to customize it further. I talked to a product design firm that could help us, but it will be relatively expensive to go through them. I know you can ask manufacturers on Alibaba to customize items for you, but I want to make sure everything is done right and of good quality. Thank you. Well, uh, Liv, I actually do not have any experience in manufacturing a product. However, I tend to often have a whole lot of ideas for products to manufacture. So this could be maybe a process we learn together. Um, if I were you and I was looking to manufacture a product, I would probably turn to Joel Gandara. He's one of the mentors here. Um, he knows how this manufacturing of stuff works. Um, I've, I've never even ordered anything off of Alibaba. Even though I hear about it, I just kind of forget about it. So, um... I'm not the right person to help you on that one, but I look forward to seeing how that unfolds and keep me in the loop on that. Sorry. Okay, my next question is for Tatiana Mamedi. I think I got that right. Let me know if I butchered it. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so the her question is, what are some ways I can reward my employees to keep them motivated and excited in a quick service type restaurant. Background is uh, the summer gets really busy. We want to do something exciting uh, where we give someone a $500 to $1,000 bonus at the end of the season. I was thinking a chart to keep track so people can get really excited. I don't want it to be a cutthroat competition. I want the team to work well together and I want them to feel appreciated. Um, this is awesome, and, and it's great that you're thinking about how to how to uh, motivate your employees and keep them happy and be a champion for you as a company and as an employer. That's awesome. Um, keeping a chart would be a good idea. However, I wonder how accessible that chart would be because human nature tends to um, cheat. And um, you might end up having cheaters happen. But what I was thinking is maybe in addition to a whiteboard or chart, you know, somewhere where they could see what's happening, um, maybe if they get to a certain level, like you could have different levels. So when they reach that level, you could give them a, uh, a raffle ticket. And at the end of the summer, uh, you could, you know, depending on how many raffle tickets they get, that could be in, in the pot. And then when you have your end of the summer party, you could raffle off that bonus prize or whatever. And it would be an incentive for them to get as many raffle tickets into that uh, pool as possible to possibly win. Um, again, I'm wondering how you're going to monitor um the chart because well just keep a backup somewhere just in case somebody <laughs> gets a wild idea to to cheat on that um so that that's really good idea um also what i have found works for us is uh, it's hard during a busy season but if there is a period of time maybe in a, a morning like your slowest day of the week in the morning you guys could all get together and do something fun, like playing a game on teams where they have to work together. I know a lot of people do those escape rooms. Um, that seems to be a really good team building exercise. I personally have never done it, but I've wanted to see it. And um, 
I was talking to a consultant the other day who had just designed an, a Zoom escape room type of thing. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that would go, but she did it and she said it was really successful. So there are ways you, you can include everybody even through COVID or whatever's happening in your state. I'm not sure what state you're in. Um, but, uh, yeah, there, there's different ways. Um, I, I like the team, you know, one team against another team that seems to work out really well in, in my situation with my technicians, they have a, a blast, uh, ragging on each other and stuff. So, um, good luck with that. Next question is AJ Couts. Um, how do you choose where to focus when, when everything needs work? background is maybe it's this phase of business growth or perhaps it's my perspective but I feel like nothing we're executing for our clients is performing nearly as well as it should be. I feel like the spinning plate entertainment guy who is always bouncing from one plate um, that's about to fall to another. With many different types of plates wobbling I'm really struggling to apply my focus to to really excelling at any one thing. Um, as inter as entrepreneurs, I think every single person in this group can relate to this question. It's definitely, uh, an issue that we all have, um, is prioritizing your time is, is definitely a big headache at times. Um, until you get your processes set and in place, you, you may continue to feel that way. Um, so what, what I often tell people to do, and I, I say this almost every time I do a zoom session is I take my, the things I need to do. And I put one on a sticky note. I don't care if I end up with 50 sticky notes, it's fine. I throw them up on a wall and I start prioritizing. What do I need to work on? Um, when I'm going through my priorities, I tend to, um, anything that makes money is my first priority. And then, um, my second priority is anything having to do with my employees and motivating them or keeping them happy. That is my second priority. And then my third priority is organization within my own company, whether it's files on the server or actual filing cabinets, it doesn't matter. Um, but those are the things I prioritize with, those are my main categories. And then I would stick those sticky notes into those three category, categories and then put them in order of importance from there as well. It really helps me to keep my stuff in perspective because I'm all over the place. Um, and hopefully that'll help you. Um, but just know that you're not alone. And every single one of us in here has had that issue for sure, definitely, especially while you're working through processes. Um, but I do want to emphasize, too, the importance of getting those processes in place. The more processes you have in place, whether it's uh, your SOP manual that people have to read or if you do videos, which I highly recommend, um, videos that go alongside of the SOP as those get into place, you will find that you spend less time on those items and you can have more time to focus on the things that will make you money and, and grow. Um, so that's my spin on it. Okay, the next question is Martina Wink. Um, how I motivate myself and my workers not to give up in the beginning of our business? Background is I run a home health care business in Switzerland. Oh, that's cool. Right on. Um, I am a nurse by trade. Doctors and, and hospitals refer patients to me, and I bill the insurance companies for services we provide. I am a new company, and I want to keep my new team motivated and inspired as we grow. I'm looking for tips on how to do that. Thanks. Um, Martina. I, I remember being in this situation too, and 
where I made a mistake is I wanted to be everybody's friend and make it, you know, the place to work and all that stuff. Um, what I found is that by doing that, I actually kind of undermined my own authority. You know, everybody thought that they should be able to kind of do whatever they wanted to do because I wouldn't get mad or anything. So, so in my own hindsight, I wish I had been more structured in the beginning and holding people accountable. So I get that you want to motivate the employees and make them happy to work there and all that. And, and that's great. Um, but keep a, keep an eye on, or if you can, if I had to do it again, I would keep an eye on that level of authority as well. But um, what I talked about earlier for Tatiana's question is like the the taking um, a day or half a day or just maybe even a couple hours and playing a game where your employees are on two different teams, they have to compete against each other. Um, that is always going to be one of my recommendations because I've seen it work wonders with uh, the camaraderie among our technicians. Um, so I'm going to keep saying it. Probably every single Zoom meeting is is having those. But you could, uh, you know, you could give a gift certificate for a massage. You could um, order lunch in one day, you know, maybe one day a month or if you really wanted to, one day a week where you provide the lunch for them. Um, but other, other than that, I wouldn't, Personally, I wouldn't go too overboard on on uh, being that it company that everybody wants to work for. I don't know. Hopefully that helps. And I love knowing you're here from Switzerland. That's pretty awesome. Okay, next question is another question from Tatiana Mehmeti. Um... I have an employee that left to go work for another restaurant and just messaged me to let me know it didn't work out and if she could have her job with us back. What should I do? Um, I own a smoothie smoothie bowl juice bar. We have been having uh, issues with employees lately, lately and many leaving due to their senior year being over and them wanting to have a fun summer and a few who graduated college and now pursuing their career. Uh, lately, some high school students are leaving to go get a summer temp job that pays cash, or in this case, the employee left to go work at a restaurant owned by a family friend in order to receive more tips. I had a conversation with this employee, letting her know we appreciate her, and if there was anything we could do, we would try to accommodate. She said she loved her job but wanted to go get cash tips. Here, here we are two weeks later. We replied to her text to let her know it was nice to hear from her and apologize that things didn't work out. I told her I want to talk next week. How would you handle this? Okay, so I have had this happen. Um, again, we go back to human nature. Um, we always tend to think that the grass is greener on the other side. And then when we get to that other side, we find out, no, that's not always the case. So what I would think about is how much value did that employee bring when she was employed with me? Um, was she a team player? Did she do a good job? Were, did I like her? Um, did the customers like her? Those are the things I would think about before even considering um, rehiring her. Um, I tend to think that it's possible that she saw that she had a good thing and she shouldn't have left and maybe that's why she's wanting to come back. Um, if she had been a good employee, I personally would take her back if I had a position for her. I would not make a position for her because I wouldn't want other employees to see, oh, I can leave and I can come back. Um, because that does put a message out to them as well. Um, 
So it, there's really a balance there. It, it really depends on if she was a great worker and you want her back. If you want her back, you could try it and see what happens. If, if uh, she caused any issues in the past, that this would be a good time to be like, nope, we're done, you know, sorry, you left, and, and have that be it. Um, hopefully that helped you a little bit. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I tend to, I would probably bring her back and see what happens. Uh, and I would also put out some kind of a message to the other employees regarding that. Um, maybe even like, see, the grass isn't always greener on the other side, you know? And uh, maybe the other employees will see that, hey, you know, this is really a really good place to work. And maybe I don't want to leave. So anyway, I hope that helps. Um, and okay. Oh, I have another. Wow. My questions are Tatiana, Martina, Tatiana, Martina. <laughs> I should be messaging with you guys. You ladies. Sorry. Um, let's see. Martina Wick. Okay, how to get stronger in motivating myself. Uh, again, her business description, she runs a home health care business in Switzerland, nurse by trade. We are, I already read all this. Um, how to get stronger in motivating yourself. My recommendation and what I did when I needed this help is I got a coach. Um, a coach will hold you accountable. You'll set goals you'll smash those goals and then work with that person. Um, having a coach was a huge change for me. Um, it helped me get my direction on track. And, and when you are seeing your accomplishments, sorry, happen as you're checking things off your list, um, you do get that sense of, okay, I got that done. Now what next? What can I do? What can I do? And that coach in the background is so beneficial to have. It's just that that rock, that rock that we all need to have to hang on to, keep us grounded, all that good stuff. So my recommendation is get a coach. There's a ton of people in here doing, a ton of the mentors are doing coaching. Um, definitely look into that. Sean's a great coach. Joel's a great coach. Peter's a great coach. Um, JT is a great coach. Like any one of them would help you to, to get that motivation back by helping you achieve your goals. So I hope that helps. Okay. My next question is Tatiana Memeti. Sorry. I have to look at it every time I say it. I apologize. Um, should I be concerned about taking my staff on the boat? for the day off if a few of them are under age. Um, we have been trying to come up with fun ways to reward our staff, staff. After different recommendations from a few mentors, we are thinking about a big boat party on the lake, trying to figure out if we allow them to bring a guest or limit to just employees. My husband's biggest concern is the underage employees drinking. Uh, we do not want to be liable. Is this a bad idea? Should we think of something else? Or how do we handle this situation? Okay. We used to have Christmas parties. And they were so much fun. Oh my gosh. Like there are so many stories from our Christmas parties. Over the years though, I found out I cannot do that anymore. Um, I never had an issue with the underage drinking. However... Yeah, we've had some some uh, drinking for sure. So at the in the end, what I started doing is I was having it at a hotel and getting them uh, getting a discounted rate for the employees so they could stay there. Now, with that being said, talking about doing a day on a boat, um, number one, I don't know what state you're in, and it really depends on your state. You've got You've got to think about workers' comp. 
issues if if it's a mandatory thing let me just share a story with you so we thought it would be fun to take our employees and go have lunch on the beach and play volleyball simple enough okay um it wasn't mandatory but it was our our fun day um one of my technicians in playing volleyball ran into one of the admin people, knocked her down, and it ended up being a workers' comp claim. Um, I was not happy about that at all, but there's nothing I could do. I'm in California, and we're responsible for everything. Um, I didn't tell her to play volleyball. You know, I it was offered, but whatever. Plus, her knee was hurt before which I knew, and it became a worker's comp claim because it made it worse. Whatever. That's a whole other topic I, I don't want to really get into. Um, there's a few things you could do, possibly. Check with your state. I would definitely consult with a, a local HR consultant about this, um, but it might be that they sign a disclaimer, maybe. Um, it might be that you have no alcohol there. If somebody sneaks it, that wasn't your intent. And a lot of courts look at intent. Um, and Or you could have raffle tickets, like you get two tickets for a drink. Um, and then the underage, that will most likely be a major problem. Um, if you are supplying the alcohol and underage people get a hold of it and then they're, they have an accident and it comes out that you supplied the alcohol, you're going to be facing some major issues. Um, so again, I would consult with your whoever in your area, your local HR consultant, and see how they would handle that. That's what I would do. I would be talking to my HR people. Um, we're actually debating doing a day um, where we charter a fishing boat and go out and do deep sea fishing for a day. And so I'm consulting now with my HR people on what, what I need to cover, what I need to do. Um, obviously, we won't have alcohol on that um, because there's typically a whole crew doing taking care of the fish or doing all that and they provide lunch and they provide everything so there won't be um any drinking however i am consulting with hr to make sure all of my bases are covered so just be careful with that just be smart um because that can that can definitely get you into a bad situation really fast okay so that is all of my questions I see on here. Hi, honey. Hi, Sean. Uh, Amy Lee, is it pr pronounced Emily? I'm curious. I, I love your name, though. It's very French. Uh, Am Emily Letourneau. Very cool. Hey, Trevor. I hope to see you tonight if you're not traveling. Um, and Tina, I hope I was able to help you with uh, your questions. So I'm, oh, that wasn't you. That was Tatiana. I'm sorry. Hi, Tina. Okay, so anyway, I don't have any questions here. I hope you all have a wonderful day and keep smashing those goals. Well, set them and then smash those goals. Have a great day, everybody.